Grade 6 Math, number 13.1b, Solid Figures and Their Nets, Part 2. The surface area of a solid figure is the sum of all the areas of its lateral faces or surfaces. And we can use a net to help us find the surface area of a figure. So remember, a net is a plain figure that can be folded into a solid figure. So this T-shape right here is the net for this cube. It could be folded up into that solid figure. Just fold it along the lines and slowly, like this one would fold over and over, see? And then these sides would fold up. So that would help us find the surface area for a cube. So which one of these nets are correct? This one looks like a stick of butter, doesn't it? So if we unfolded it, would it look like this? Yes, it would. I know it helps that I have the word yes there, but we have the two square sides on each side, and then this line right here would be this line. So number three would be this side, see? And then it would fold right here, and then five would be the side right here that's hiding behind the back, and six would be the top part, see? What about that? Would that make the same shape? Yes, it would, because we could fold these sides up and then fold, 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 fold until it wraps around and makes the long rectangle bar. See? How about that one? With the sides that are in different positions like this, they're not equally on each side of a rectangle. This one's on this side and this one's on this side. And this would work. If you folded this here and folded this here and then did all these dotted lines as folds, these would work and it would turn out looking like our bar it would work. You can get some paper, some school paper, and try making some of these. But this one, look, it's got the squares on the same side. Now, what would happen when we folded this one is the six would eventually overlap the five. When we folded this one and then this one, number four would come around on top of number two, and number six would overlap number five, and there would be a hole on this side. There would be no cap, okay? So for our wedge of cheese, what would it look like unfolded? Yes, this would be right. If you look, it's got a 90 degree angle right here that is touching this long skinny rectangle in the back. See that? Here's our long skinny rectangle in the back. And if we folded this right along this line in between two and three, this would fold up and touch the number five rectangle right there, triangle right there, see that? So that one would work. But how about this one? Look at where the small rectangle is. Is the small rectangle supposed to be in front of this triangle? So if you folded this one up, what would happen if you folded number one straight up and you folded four and five up? It wouldn't completely close it, would it? It would stay open a little bit, there would be a gap. So no, that one is not correct because the small rectangle is supposed to be on the side of the 90 degree angle here, see? Not in the front. How about these? Yeah, because look at where the 90 degree angles of the rectangles are. This could fold up and then this could fold here and then fold up and then touch it right at the top here, see? That's where it would close. And then this one would be correct because by the time we folded this one here and folded it here and brought it up and around, this piece, the bottom of number five, would touch the top of number two. These would fold up and it would work. So yeah, that one would work too. How about this one? This one's got the triangles going in a different direction. Yes, this is the same thing as this one. It's just turned around. It's just pointing the other direction, see? It's got a big rectangle with the triangles pointing down like arrows. So does this one. If I flipped my camera around, you'd be able to see it. And then it's got the small rectangle and then another big rectangle. So it's exactly the same as this one. It's just turned around going the other way. So what if we had a can? Yep, this would work because if we unfolded this, it would turn into a big rectangle. And then we would have our base, one and two, in this one parts two, one and three, would fold. And then this would wrap around it and it would make that can. And this one also. This one, we could turn number two into a circle, 
and glue it right there and then fold one and three down to close the tops. But this one, no. The bases are not connected to each other. So if you saw this, this would not be correct. If you folded this right in between one and two and it came over, these two don't touch each other. They're separated like this between the rectangle, see? How about this one? No. The rectangle wouldn't be able to wrap around the circle, the base, see? This one would work. As long as number one and number three are way on the edge, as long as they're way on the corners like this, it would work because when you wrapped this one around, it would end up being like this. This number one would be right above this one when it ended up getting completely wrapped around. So yes, this would work. Isn't that crazy? What about our cube? We know that this would work because we could fold it all around number three and bring the four squares around number three. We could bring them up like this. And then if we folded it here, this one would be the top. It would be the top piece, see? Would this one work? In this one, we had one bumping out. Now we don't. But yes, it would work. We could fold this one up and this one up like this. And then these could be folded to wrap around it, see? This one would not work. If we folded it here and here, number two would end up being a side piece like that, and number one would end up being on the top, see? It would create an L shape. This would be the side, and then this would end up folding up and being on the top like that. Then these would fold on top of each other. One and five would end up being on top of each other, and this whole side would be open over here. So no, that wouldn't work. How about this one? Would this work? We could fold up number one and number three, so the sides would come up. Number four would be the very top, hovering right above number two. Five could come up and be this side, but then six would be on top of four. See? these Number six and number four would be on top of each other, overlapping. So that wouldn't work. How about this one? This one wouldn't work because there's supposed to be six faces. And there's only five faces here, so that won't work. What about this one? Would this work? If we folded number three and number four up, these two would actually turn into triangles. They would fold in on themselves and turn into triangles to try to fold here. And they would overlap each other. So no, that one wouldn't work either. So you have to be very careful when you're looking at a net and imagining what it would look like folded up. Now they have these on the standardized test, so if you can get good at this, you can score well on a test. This is spatial reasoning. Can you imagine in your brain what it would look like folded up? It's considered a very, very good thing to be able to do this because you'll score better on tests, okay? So practice with this. You can even try getting a box and opening it up or making your own cubes and stuff and trying to figure out how to make them yourself that'll help you in the future a lot, okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.